Gonzalez here, starting today the um, film week of uh, Glenn Gold, and um, you are sitting on his um, chair. It's, on, it's mentioned on the uh, flyers. So is this a real chair of Glenn Gold? And um, is this the last chair he played, maybe 1964? Because after that, he didn't play on official concerts. I'm very jealous of that. He 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 stopped playing concerts and retired very very early. You know, I'm. I'm I'm 35 years old and there's no way I can retire. I don't have that kind of, you know, kind of balls to just say I'm stopping. You know? So I really am jealous of Glenn Gould, first of all. The chair I'm playing on is a legal reproduction of the Glenn Gould's chair. So it's a Swiss designer who got the rights to reproduce, I think, a few hundred of these chairs. So it's not technically, it doesn't have his ass smell on it, you know, but tonight it will have Gonzalez's ass smell on it. So it's almost as good. It's a chair that he insisted on playing his, his whole life, even for recording. But he played it so often, and all the fabric came apart. <laughs> and by the end of his career, when he was recording, he was still sitting on it, but it didn't have any more fabric, and he was sitting on just the metal frame. So he's, I think he's a bit of a masochist, this guy. The pain. You expect pain tonight? Um, concerts are painful in general. They're, you know, sometimes they're very painful for the audience, depending if I'm really on my game or not. But there's always a certain amount of pain because there's, there's you know, music is war. And, and you have to decide if basically the audience, they're either your soldiers and you're there to build them up into a frenzy so that they're ready to fight with you, that's on a good night, and on, other, on a bad night, they're, they're your enemy, actually, and you have to beat them during the concerts. When have you met Glenn Gold for the first time in your life? He's a massive icon in Canada. He's kind of like a rock star. He's kind of like the Canadian John Lennon, you know. So everyone knows a bit about, about Glenn Gould and we're taught to look up to him and, and we're taught to, you know, be like him. And uh, that's why Canadians are so eccentric. Um, that's why Canadians are so funny. And um, that's why Canadians are generally weird, you know. So I met him, I mean, more as an icon before I even knew what he did musically. I think I met him um, because his picture is in textbooks and, and under the, the three great Canadians that exist. You know, you have David Cronenberg, Leonard Cohen, and Glenn Gould. That's it. Did he inspire you with his individual style? You know, I just wanted to be like him. That's why I wear my hair slicked back. That's why, you know, I have bad haltung also. I saw he more than inspired me. It was just, it was a foregone conclusion that I was going to base my entire life on him because we have so few options in Canada. We have no role models. You have to understand this is a, this is a country with no culture.
imagine you to be in your, in your studio and you're uh, deciding to make music. Is there a certain mood which, which comes out of you to say, okay, let's make hip hop today or let's make piano today? You know, I have many different sides to my musical ability, which is part of the, the gift and the curse of being a musical genius is that you're not really in one style, but that's a gift because it's wonderful, because it means I can go from doing hip hop to classical to jazz. Um, you know, I could make some Canadian country music if I wanted to. I choose not to, but I could. Um, and the curse part is that people then say, well, who are you really? You know, when I came to Berlin, for example, I noticed this big hole. There was all these amazing underground musicians making electronic music. But when they would perform, they would perform with their head buried in, in the laptop. And they, they were like, no, we don't want to communicate. We don't want to perform because that makes the music cheap. Which is an, another version of this. It's going to take away my soul. You know, I have no soul. I have no problem with communicating with people. I want to communicate because, of course, I'm a lonely supervillain. This is why I do music in the first place. It's not for me. It's to be able to get close to people. But when I got to Paris, it was a different story. It was six years later. And what I thought was missing was this very pure, melancholic sound of music. Music had gotten to be so based on sound and attitude that I wanted to make music with no attitude and no sound. No attitude means no words, no rapping, no crazy Gonzalez talking. But what made the music crazy was how pure it was and how, hopefully, authentic it was in terms of creating emotions in people. What do you think about this city? What 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 is so special about Berlin? Yeah, it's it's a wonderful place. I think it's um, it's a place that wasn't planned, and so it uh, has a lot of accidents, has a lot of very positive chaos, and uh, for the kind of big city it is, it's not very expensive, and uh, the people haven't really gotten infected with this big city meanness that exists, for example, in Paris, where I live now, or in London, or in other big cities. So I think that has a lot going for it. Um, I'm a definitely a big Berlin fan. I lived here for six years. I continue to visit a lot. I really have nothing but good things to say. But it's a wonderful city. You know, I love I love the Kurztrek, and this only exists in Berlin. It's the only place in the world where you have the Kurztrek. I read uh, very often that um, you're some kind inspired by comics. That you do you see yourself as like a like a, a villain or like a super villain of these uh, Marvel and DC comics from the universe that they are on the one side they're very outstanding um, tough guys on the other side they're very lonely and very calm yeah there's something about the you know the lonely hyper intelligent um, super villain with, with a lot to prove he needs lots of attention he has to really stand out from everybody else um, but in the end, of course, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's often a misunderstood genius um, who has trouble really getting close to people. And the only way he can really get close to people is by doing basically enormous events in front of mass groups of people. So the closest thing you have to that today is to be a musician. You know, to, where you have all these people ready to watch you do uh, your evil deeds. And in my case, you know, with musical genius and the fact that I'm a virtuoso piano player, it enables me to sort of cast this magic spell and for a brief moment while I'm on stage, maybe feel close to other human beings for, you know, 40 minutes of my life. Mm -hmm. 